Yo, what is going on ladies and gentlemen, Horcrux here and welcome to the channel. So in today's video, we'll be going over the Holy Knight, aka the Paladin, all the combos, pros and cons, and the tripod system. Now, the Paladin is very versatile, you can play it many different ways, so we'll be covering all that as well, apart from the Korean meta PvP build for Grandmaster 3v3 arenas. Also, guys, I want to thank each and every one of you who watch my Lost Art content. This is a great game, I'm glad to be a part of the Lost Art community. I look forward to producing content for you guys in the future. So without further ado, let's hop into the video. Okay, so the Paladin. If I had to describe the Paladin in an example, it would be like having a really bad headache, but it not being so bad that you have to go to the hospital, but bad enough just to make you miserable. That's pretty much the Paladin in a nutshell. It is labeled as a quote unquote support class, but it is anything but. And to be honest with you guys, the Paladin is probably the most broken class ever in Lost Ark when it comes to PvP. You can carry your team super easy. You can turn any 3v3 fight into your advantage. You have massive AoE. There's all kinds of different playstyles you can play with the Paladin. You can play a super aggressive playstyle, which I'm going to make a build video on later. But for the sake of this video, we're just covering the quote unquote Korean meta PvP build for the arenas. I'm I'm going to explain all the morphs but guys if you want to play selfish you won't play really greedy this class destroys everything okay any range supports you're going to be so freaking annoying now when it comes to 1v1 with uh, melee classes you're going to struggle a lot but don't even worry about that like your aoe is hit super hard and you don't really do a lot of damage until you pop your Z and your S that we have labeled here on the bar and you just go absolutely bananas. Okay, so when it comes to the stats, I always put everything in swiftness because this lowers your cooldown on pretty much all your abilities and make you a little bit quicker. Since you're going to be kind of a frontliner on this build now, there's a more aggressive playstyle which you want to not put your points into endurance. You'll want to put them into a domination or a crit instead. But uh, for the sake of this video, we're putting 249 points into endurance and then a value point into crit. So when it comes to the tripod selection, I realize you guys may or may not have a lot of time, so I time stamped everything out for you guys, and you can also use it for reference. But for those of you who want to stick around and learn a little bit more about the tripod setup, let's get into it. Okay, so when it comes to our Q, we're going to slot charge, so we're running swift fingers, we're running shine protection for the shield that it gives you when you're actually activating the skill, and then we're going with ambush attack. This gives you a knockup, and then you can also extend other knockups off of this. So for our W, we're going to be using the executioner sword. This helps with our mobility and also our gap closing. Okay, so for our E, we're going to be using the execution of justice. Now this is a pretty awesome spell. It literally does everything. It does damage. It does knockups. Plus it looks amazing. So. Reason Bulwark yet again for having a shield. I like to live, okay, so that's why I'm picking Bulwark for this one, just to kind of give you a buffer in case you get interrupted going in. We're using Strength of Release. This is going to increase your damage while your Executioner is up, which is your Z, by the way. And then we have Light Explosion. This will deal damage toward the tail end of the ability. Okay, next, and a skill you do not want to miss when you use it is Holy Sword because it has a very long cooldown, but it hits like a Mack truck. So. We're going Propulsion because this helps with our gap closing. We're going Vital Point Hit because it increases the damage of this ability. And then also Condense Energy, further increasing the damage of this ability. Now, when you use this with your Heaven's Blessing and your Zed, oh my god, this hits hard. Especially if you hit a couple people with this in a line. Oof. Okay, so the next tripod is Holy Protection. Now, I am going to veer away from the meta guy for this one because... Quite frankly, if you go with the meta guide, you have a 40 second cooldown on this, which is pretty absurd. That's way too long of a cooldown for my comfort. So we're going with Swift Fingers. We're going with Robust Protection. This will help your engage meter here. And then we're going with Thunderous Protection instead of the Valve Line. The Valve Line actually adds a 10 second cooldown to this ability, which increases the cooldown on this like 33%, which is a pretty nutty, really not that beneficial in my opinion. I'd much rather have Thunderous Protection because it does lightning damage at the tail end of the ability when it expires. And then it's not just your damage shield that does damage, it's everyone you apply this to. So in total, you could have this of like 12, 13K damage. I know in arenas, this will hit for around 3K-ish and then it'll crit for 6K, maybe 5.5K. Imagine three people proccing 5.5K hits, you know? So every little bit of damage does add up. Plus the cooldown reduction, Again, Vow of Light, to each their own, I think Vow of Light increasing the cooldown on this is, is just pretty nutty. Go with Thunder's Protection on this one. Okay, so next is our S, is Heavenly Blessing. This is an amazing ability, and you can pick whatever path you want on this one. It's kind of up to you. So we're going with Agile Cast on this one. I'm going with Perseverance personally because it gives you even more 
damage mitigation, but a lot of people are going weightlessness as well because that 15% increase attack speed for all party members is pretty nutty, especially if you have a couple melee DPS with you. And then last but not least, we're running Heaven's Requiem. Okay, so D is Godsend's Law. This is more or less a flex spot. I prefer to be a team player, so that's why I'm running this one. Alternatively, instead of running Law, you could run the Holding Dash if you really wanted to, but I, again, I like to be a team player, so I'm definitely going to opt in for a Godsend Law for this one. So we're going Shield. Again, more Shields, the better in my opinion. Wide Angle Attack. And then Grace. So you receive the blessing from Lots Gardens for all party members inside God's Decree. Incoming damage minus 70%. So if someone's getting gone on, you'll cast it, you'll channel it. Yeah, you may get interrupted, but you can completely negate any burst combo they have going out because that's a 70% damage mitigation and then PvP is also 70%. So okay, last but not least is our F. We have a Wrath of God. So I'm opting for why Thunderstroke for this one. Go with Thunder because you can electrocute people and electrocute as a two second stun in PvP. So not only can you electrocute them, if you go with Lights Guarding as well, it can also impose a knockup and then you can juggle whoever you're focusing and collapsing on. So when it comes to your Z and your X, I almost always go with Sacred Executioner because not only does it buff your damage tremendously, and plus you're gonna pop this, usually with Heaven's Blessing if you're ready to all in on collapse, let's say you get someone caught in electrocution, or they're getting juggled, you can all in with your team with Sacred Executioner and damn near take someone from 100 to 0 in a full all-in combo. Now, Z is okay if your team is kind of snowballing and you just want to amp their damage up a little bit, you can definitely do that, but I'm pretty selfish for the most part, so I always go Sacred Executioner because the damage from this is insane, especially when you compare this with your V, which is your ultimate. Uh, Elethane's Light is the one I typically go for, or now you can go with the other ultimate as well here, um, but I almost always go with light over judgment for the simple fact that it just does more damage. Okay, so the whole point of arenas is to do damage and kill people. And quite frankly, this is such a carry class. When you start catching two, three heroes in all of your AoEs and you're bursting them down and juggling them, like this is just the icing on the cake that you need. Okay, so that's going to do it for the tripod setup again. The pally has a couple different play styles you can adapt to. You need to find something that suits you. Don't just copy pasta from this build video or someone else's build video. You need to find something you like and enjoy. No one can tell you how to run your class or what works best for you. You have to figure that out on your own. So in the next section, we're gonna go over some of the combos, some of the basic ones, the more complex ones. I'll play some music with some pictographs on the screen and with the order of everything you wanna show them in again. This is not all the combos you can possibly come up with. You can get really, really creative, especially if you go more of an aggressive type of build. So hopefully you guys liked today's video. If you found any information in, at all in this video helpful, I would really appreciate a like and sub. And a huge shout out to my patrons and also my community members who keep this channel afloat. I really could not be doing this without you guys. So catch you guys later. Enjoy the combos.